Hello everyone, Lettuce Lassamoris from the wanderinginvestor.com here in Belgrade. I'm spending some time in Serbia looking at investment opportunities, so I've been looking at real estate. But today I'm off to the Belgrade Stock Exchange to meet the business director there to discuss the situation with capital markets here in Serbia. So you'll see it's a quite a unique market, low liquidity, but it's crashed and has just been flat for many years. And apparently there are some interesting developments ahead. So let's go meet him. There's a direct bus line between my Airbnb and the stock exchange. So I'll just hop into one of those. Cool, so I missed my bus stop, but it's fine. It's one of the reasons I take public transport when I seek to look at investments in a city because I want to understand the dynamics, how long it takes to go from point A to point B. Sometimes you see that it's a big issue with public transport, so you see why you wouldn't want to invest there. Sometimes it's the other way around. Getting from one side of town to the other is actually really easy because of some fast public transit. So that changes the dynamics. So it's not about saving $2 on a cab, it's about getting insight. So I'm here with Mr. Ristic, who is the Director of Business Operations here at the Belgrade Stock Exchange. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you for coming for us. Thank you. So as a bit of background, so I came here to Serbia because I wanted to find investment opportunities. I am bullish Serbia long term. I like the fact that it has a very unique foreign policy, trying to play off the West and the East, trying to find a middle ground to take advantage of both sides. It's visible in the country's free trade agreements with the European Union, with uh, the Eurasian Economic Union, Russia, with Turkey, etc. So it's, it's, Serbia has been very good at, at managing this. Also, Serbia has been attracting a lot of foreign direct investment from everywhere. The country has a, a substantial current account deficit, which is an ongoing problem, but it's really being covered by FDI. So long term, it looks very attractive if it stays on its current path. So I would like to have a bit of exposure to Serbia because it's in Europe and it's a unique play. So I came here, I looked at real estate, beautiful real estate, but it looks like prices have ran ahead of themselves. So I started looking at the local stock markets. I came across the, the web page of the Belgrade Stock Exchange. I was looking at some figures. Turnover is very low to say the least. We had so turnover approximately 35 million euros in the last year. So it's a low liquidity market. And a lot of the companies, to not say most companies, don't have much information online. So it's hard to find proper reports. So essentially, I'm here to try to, to try to understand the market. Essentially, why is the Belgrade Stock Exchange in the situation that it's in currently compared to other markets around, like in Hungary or in Bulgaria, where there is a fair amount of, of liquidity, actually a lot of liquidity. So why are we in this current situation here in, in Belgrade and what's the way forward? Okay, Maurice, thank you for those questions. Uh, first, I'm very glad that uh, we can have opportunity to host you here and try to explain uh, the reasons why the Serbian capital market is performing 
as is performing right now. I can say that you arrived just in time in Serbia. Yes, our capital market is uh, currently under development uh, and uh, I can exclusively say for you and share the information that uh, in the nearest future the government of the Republic of Serbia will adopt the document uh, named uh, Serbian Capital Market Development Strategy that will tackle all the problems that current uh, Belgrade Stock Exchange are experiencing and what uh, are the problems with our companies, what are the problems with our capital formation here and uh, the uh, current situation that Serbian uh, capital market and the Serbian economy is uh, banco, banco centric and uh, that capital market is not utilized at all and doesn't fulfill any of its primary functions. So uh, I think that in the nearest future, in the I think uh, next year, we will uh, see dramatic changes uh, in this field and uh, that the capital market in Serbia will uh, bring opportunities for the Serbian companies, for the Serbian economy and of course for the investors like you. So I can say that you just arrived in time to step in on the Serbian capital market and to find uh, good opportunities for you and your uh, investors and followers. Because we're, thank you, because we are chatting a mm -hmm. bit earlier and you were explaining how the whole privatization process went. Um, essentially, the government privatized most companies once socialism ended and these companies were essentially forced to list and workers all received shares. And then some speculative bubble happened. In 2007, the trading volume was approximately 2 billion euros. Yeah. And since then, it's gone down from 2 billion euros a year to 35 million euros a year. So it's an insane drop. And since then, it's just been flat. It would appear that there is potential long term for things to, to rectify themselves. Yeah, definitely. The Serbian capital market should reflect the, the rise in the Serbian economy. And Serbian economy is, is rising right now. And you, you can see that uh, on the streets even. So, uh, but uh, the source of current situation uh, on the, the Belgrade Stock Exchange uh, is uh, in, in the method of the privatization that uh, is done uh, 10 years after the most uh, uh, socialist countries do it. So uh, we started our privatization process in 2000, 2001, and uh, basically uh, all companies that are currently traded uh, on the Belgrade Stock Exchange and traded uh, 20 years before are here by the rule of law. There was no uh, single IPO until 2019 uh, where we had first company that uh, that really tapped the market and, and, and make an IPO here in the Belgrade Stock Exchange. All the other companies uh, arise from the post-privatization process. And one of the major characteristics of our privatization that uh, all shell shareholders uh, get their shares for free. Government gave them for free. So uh, you have the very unique situation that people came from the socialist economy, uh, get shares, didn't know what and how to value those assets, uh, what to do with them, etc. etc. So we became really dependent on the foreign investors in time that you are uh, talk about in 2006, 2007 and 8. Uh, the, I don't know, 80% of the turnover was made by the uh, European investment professional investors, so investment funds major. And uh, when a global economic financial crisis hit, the normal portfolio allocation said, okay, uh, most frontiers should be cut, the most riskier positions should be cut, and they really cut those uh, positions here in Serbia. Our major indices fell more than 80% in a very short period of time, and that was uh, pretty dramatic <laughs> for, for the development of capital markets. So when you don't have naturally built the capital market, you don't have uh, the demand of your institutional demand based in Serbia and you, we, we didn't have pension funds in that time, uh, we didn't have uh, significant assets under management in our domestic investment fund because they, our investment funds started operation in 2007. So they have portfolio formation at the peak of the prices in 2007. So 
in that moment they have a set under management I, I'm not sure I try something like 400 500 millions of euros and they get really really killed in next I think, first six months of uh, their operations so right now we have the the investment funds but they are sets under management very very slow we had voluntary pension funds but they are still not playing significant roles on the Serbian capital market. Yeah, because it's also important for the, the country to develop its capital markets. As mentioned, the country does have a current account issue that's being essentially plugged by FDI. Having a liquid capital markets would help with foreign direct investment, and it would also ensure that people just don't keep inflating a potential real estate bubble and take their money out of the country to go invest in other people's stock markets so that the money would remain in Serbia. So if these, if these reforms do go through, that would be not only good for the country, but that's also a clear catalyst for investors, whether institutional or retail, who would be interested in, in playing here on the Belgrade Stock Exchange. I'm looking at some numbers. We're not here to discuss specific companies but some of these companies looking at their PE ratios are stupidly cheap. They are highly <laughs> illiquid, but they're stupidly cheap. So potentially for patient capital, but knowing that there is most likely a clear catalyst in the form of reforms being passed through by the, by the government, it could be an interesting play. Obviously this is not financial or investment advice, but something is brewing here in the Balkans, something is brewing in the Serbian capital markets. I would just say s try to follow the situation uh, because there, there is a developing story here in Serbia. Yeah, definitely you, you can say that uh, when you see the problems, uh, when somebody sees the problems, another one can see the opportunity and we are talking about uh, here on the one hand, that there, there are the problems, but those problems are very huge opportunity for uh, somebody who wants to, 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 to invest in, in the frontier markets like Serbia is. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there is a lot of potential on currently traded companies on, on the, the Belgrade Stock Exchange, but our main goal uh, is to attract uh, to very vibrant private companies, very good private companies that are trying to expand their businesses and right now only solution for them to get uh, capital inflow is going to banks to, to get the credit. Okay, the, the, the interest rates are extremely low right now, but... Uh, what numbers are we talking? What are the, uh, the rates? In, in dinners, they are single digits, uh, so it, it is very attractive for the domestic companies, but you know interest rates always can go uh, on the other side and can rise dramatically. We saw that in the, in, in the past. So to not uh, utilize the capital market, to not utilize uh, the potential that you can sell shares and get acquire capital, I think it will be an efficient move for the domestic companies. Of course, in such situation where we don't have clear regulation and clear path that uh, capital market is used for, yeah, there is opportunity. Uh, there is uh, the the problem uh, for the private companies to go on the market. Nobody did it, so we had just one company that raise the capital on the capital market. How it much did they manage to raise approximately? Uh, I think they raised the 5 million euros. Okay. Uh, it's a very good uh, company listed on the price of Fintel Energia. But it was an interesting story. Uh, the owner of that company is from Italia. He has experience from the Italian capital market from the parent company Fintel Energia Spa. He raised capital on the Milano Stock Exchange and he came to Serbia, to, it's a wind farm, and tried to do the same here in Serbia. It was a little bit complicated for him, but he managed to do it. But for the people from Serbia, they, they have not ex experienced something like that, like this guy from Italy he has experience, so they are very reluctant to go o on this path. It's much easier for them to go to the bank and sign the credit letter. Interesting. Yeah.
Yeah, the, the, the source. Great. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ristich, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Yes. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. So after this interesting discussion, I went to see one of the biggest brokerage houses here in Belgrade to try to get an understanding of how to open a brokerage account. It's not easy. You need a local tax ID number. So this means giving POA to some lawyer who gets the tax ID number. Once you have this tax ID number, you can open a brokerage account locally. You can trade online. Essentially only three or four of the companies out there are, are liquid enough to trade. But when you sell the security, you need to pay capital gains taxes locally of about 15%. And until you've paid your capital gains taxes, you're not allowed to repatriate your funds. The process to pay your capital gains taxes takes about three months to one year. So really early stages here in Serbia. But if these reforms in the capital markets actually take place, then it could get very interesting. So it's almost a question of, do you go in now when everything is complicated and really front run everyone? Or do you just wait to be sure that these reforms are actually going to pass? And then you just take a plane, rush and just buy whatever, whatever's cheap and then wait for the re-rating. It's a balancing act. All right, I hope you enjoyed this content. Make sure to subscribe to my private list at thewanderinginvestor.com to follow me as I travel around the world and look at investment opportunities and citizenship and residency options as well. Cheers from beautiful Belgrade. <laughs>